Dilly in the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up the sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. All right. I wish each and every one of you a great day. Beautiful weather outside. Now, each and every month, I will go through the sanctioning bodies and let everybody know what's going on, who's ranked what, where and when. And, of course, maybe reasons why they're ranked in certain positions based on wins, losses and whatever else. Now, each and every month, I copy in the said sanctioning body. So if I'm talking about the IBF or the WBC, I will copy them in. And with the WBA, I always copy them in. And I know that the WBA watch them because a little blue tick pops up. So I know that they've watched it. Do they listen when I say that uh, they're either the most corrupt sanctioning body or the most incompetent sanctioning body? Maybe both. Maybe both. Who knows? Because there's a lot of things and a lot of reasons as to why I say that. And each and every month, I always finish the video off with, please have a look at your ranking systems and sort it out. But they don't. Okay, they just don't. But do, do they have to listen to me? No. But do they have to listen to you, the boxing fans? Absolutely. Of course they should. But they don't care. And that seems to be the problem with boxing nowadays. A lot of people will go after promoters and whatever else. For me, I start off with the sanctioned bodies because that's where the biggest problems lay. Okay. Anyway, we're going to go through the top 15. Then, of course, we're going to go through them individually. And I'll point out the new inserts and who's been dropped and whatever else. So, Anthony Joshua, of course, is the WBA super champion. Trevor Bryan is the WBA regular champion. You don't see it on the list, but Robert Hellenius is the gold champion for whatever that's worth. Number one, Daniel Dubois. Two, Alexander Usyk. Three, Luis Ortiz. Four, Andy Rich Jr. Five, Charles Martin. Six, Michael Hunter. Seven, Azure Cabiel. Eight, Adam Karnaki. Nine, Michael Plyke Coffey. Ten, Gerald Washington. Eleven, F.A. Jagba. Twelve, Frank Sanchez. Thirteen, Zahn Kotzebuski. Fourteen, Mike Wilson. And number 15, Lenier Pero. So, as you can see, there's quite... A few changes. In the fact, they're quite monumental, really. But let's go through each and every one of them. We don't need to talk about the champions, okay? So we're going to start off with number one, Daniel Dubois. Now, Daniel Dubois, okay, he won his last fight against Bogdan Dinu. Bogdan Dinu was ranked number one in the WBA for quite some time. Why was he ranked number one? When prior to him fighting Daniel Dubois, he lost two of his last four fights. And the two fights that he did win were journeymen. That's the truth of it. OK, so why was he ranked that high? I have no idea. It was clearly there for somebody to take him out and become number one. A lot of us were looking at the PBC because the WBA are very, very biased when it comes to the PBC. In fact, seven of these top 15 are PBC fighters. OK, so Dan Dubois, he loses to, to Joe Joyce and beats Bogdan Dini, becomes number one. How on earth does that work? I'm a huge fan of Dan Dubois and I will support him, of course. He's a Brit. I'm very biased when it comes to that. Most people will know. But Dan Dubois should not be number one. How do you get boosted by nine positions to the number one? Why? Because you're the interim champion? Okay, I can see that. But the truth is, the WBA interim world heavyweight title should not have been on the line for Dan Dubois versus Bogdan Dini. That's the truth of it. I don't like saying it, but that's the truth of it. Because you have to look at it and say, but he lost to Joe Joyce. But why is Joe Joyce not ranked in the top 15? Why is that? Where's Joseph Parker? If you look at the rest of the list as well, where are the likes of, say, Derek Chisora? Where is Jared Anderson? There's a lot of fighters that should be here in place of others. I'm not saying that to Dan Dubois shouldn't be ranked in the top 15. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying number one is far too high. Far too high. And I know Frank Warren saying how... He could be looking to fight Trevor Bryan for the WBA regular world heavyweight title. Okay, but as we know, the WBA, there seems to be an issue between Trevor Bryan and Manuel Char. So, you know, that fight is going to be coming up at some point. Dan Dubois, I said it before, and a lot of people laughed at it. And maybe you're right to laugh, but I still believe that he's going to become Anthony Joshua's mandatory challenger. I quite firmly believe that. Okay, anyway, so... That's Dan Dubois, but we do have to give huge, huge props to Frank Warren. He saw an opening, he saw a weakness, and he went for it. That's why he made Dan Dubois, after losing to Joe Joyce, go fight Bogdan Dinu for that regular world heavyweight title. Sorry, the interim world heavyweight title. That's how you play the system. That's how you do it. So we do have to give huge props to Frank Warren. Anyway, number two, Alexander Usyk. We know that he's going to be fighting Anthony Joshua. 
next? Is it going to be September 25th at the Tottenham Hotspur Football Stadium? Now, Alexander Usyk is the WBO mandatory, okay? But, of course, it's not just going to be the WBO belt on the line. The WBA is also going to be on the line as well, as will the IBF and, of course, the IBO. So, Alexander Usyk, is it a waste of ranking? Arguably, yes, it is, because he's getting a world title shot anyway through the WBO route. So, the WBO, sorry, the WBA ranking him for me, is a complete waste of a ranking, in my opinion, okay? Anyway, number three, Luis Ortiz, and I say this every time I speak about Luis Ortiz and people think that I'm being disrespectful to him. It's not him, it's not a personal thing, it's just that he hasn't beaten anybody. Who's he beaten to warrant this kind of lofty status? He hasn't beaten anybody. It just so happens he's a PBC fighter. He's one of seven currently ranked within the WBA heavyweight rankings, which is a little bit of a drop because... I only two months ago, they had nine PBC fighters, including the likes of Chris Ariola, ranked in here. Okay, but Luis Ortiz is there because he's a PBC fighter. Not because of achievements, not because of who he's beaten, because he hasn't beaten anybody. And that's the truth of it. That is the absolute truth of it. This is the guy who turned down two million to go fight Dillian White. The guy who turned down seven million to go fight Anthony Joshua. But yet people want to say how it's Anthony Joshua doesn't want no smoke with Luis Ortiz or Dillian White doesn't want no smoke with Luis Ortiz and others. But yet Luis Ortiz is the one turned down. Or at least his team is turning him down. Maybe Luis Ortiz is in the dark about a lot of this. Okay? Anyway, number three. Gotta be kidding me. Anyway, number four, Andy Ruiz Jr. I have a problem with him being ranked number four because he is the former unified heavyweight world champion after defeating Anthony Joshua. Yes, of course, he lost all those belts in the rematch with Joshua. And since then, he has had a fight with Chris Ariola. Notice how Chris Ariola has been dropped from the rankings. Because he, he shouldn't have been there in the first place, Mendoza. He shouldn't have been there in the first place. But hopefully we get to see Andy Ruiz Jr. versus Luis Ortiz. I know people like to see one of these guys fight, say, Dillian White. I would too. But is that likely to happen? No, I don't think so. PBC want to keep their fighters in-house as much as possible, okay? So I don't really have a problem with Andy Ruiz Jr. being ranked in number four. Number five, Charles Martin. Don't take the piss. Charles Martin is a good fighter. He is a good fighter. I know people will always look at Charles Martin because of what happened in the Anthony Joshua fight, and that's what sticks in their mind. But he does have wins over, say, Gerald Washington. He went to war with Adam Kalnacki. That was a hell of a fight, was it not? Charles Martin is better than people give him credit for. But number five, I don't think so. But why is he ranked there? Much like with Luis Ortiz and, of course, with Andy Ruiz Jr., who is a PBC fighter. That's why he's ranked there. I starting to see the bias here. Number six, Michael Hunter. I'm still disappointed with Michael Hunter with the fact that uh, he walked away from a Filip Herkovich fight because he wants to go fight a Mike Wilson, a career cruiserweight. I know Michael Hunter is, is predominantly a, a career cruiserweight as well, but at heavyweight, Michael Hunter has done very, very well. I mean, he got a draw with Alexander Povetkin. He's beaten the likes of Martin Bacoli and a couple of others, Kuzmin and what have you. So Michael Hunter, it's not really a problem with the fact that he's ranked in that kind of position for me. Because he's definitely a top 15 fighter, in my opinion. He really is. But the fact that he's looking to go fight a Mike Wilson rather than fight a Filip Herkovich, I'm not happy about that one. Sorry, Michael, but I'm not. Okay. Now, number seven, Azure Cabell, former European heavyweight um, champion. He did duck Joe Joyce. He was mandated to defend that European title against Joe Joyce. And, and instead, he went to fight uh, some absolute stiff because he was afraid of fighting Joe Joyce. That's why he vacated the European title, which, of course, that's why that belt was on the line for Joe Joyce versus Daniel Dubois. For me, Ajit Cabiel is a good fighter. Of course, his best win will be Derek Chisora when he fought him on the matchroom show in Monte Carlo some time ago now. But that's pretty much all he's done, if we're being brutally honest. Okay, so for me, maybe Cabiel is a seventh best heavyweight in the world. Maybe, but we still need to prove it. We need to see it. In fact, was it in the last fight? Was it Was it Kevin Johnson? Not so long ago? I know he's had a fight recently. I want to say Kevin Johnson, but I'm not entirely sure on that one, so don't hold me to that one if I'm wrong. But I want to see Ajit Kabiel fight somebody who's a little bit alive. Number eight, Adam Kalnaki. Again, Adam Kalnaki. Okay, he does have one loss on his resume to Robert Hellenius, but of course he's going to have his chance of redemption against Robert Hellenius in the rematch on the Fury Wilder Part 3 undercard on July the 24th. Interesting fight. I do think that Adam Kalnaki, we're going to see a little bit more from Adam Kalnaki. Adam Kalnaki will always walk forward, chin up in the air, throw uh, punches in bunches. Now I expect to see him be a little bit more thoughtful when he throws his 
punches. Be li- throw some more punch selection rather than just swing for the fences. Okay, so maybe now we're going to see a much better um, Adam Kaunaki. Of course, he's a Polish fighter, resides in America and everything. But again, he's a PBC fighter. So is he a number eight? Time will tell. Time will tell. If he defeats um, Robert Hellenius, which now I think a lot of people can agree, um, Dylan White defeating Robert Hellenius was actually a good win. Unless, of course, you're a Dylan White hater. What can you do? So... Adam Kaunaki, another PBC fighter. Number nine, Michael Coffey. is a prospect, 12-0. and 0. He's been uh, boosted up by two places. I mean, Michael Coffey, he's looking pretty good. Okay, we, we do have to say that. And I can't hate on the fact that he's ranked in number nine too much. But again, he's a PBC fighter. That's why he's ranked in there, if we're being honest. But he is going to take somewhat of a step up. No, it is a step up. We do have to in gatekeeper in Gerald Washington, who incidentally is number 10. These guys will be fighting each other next. But moving on to Gerald Washington, he's a fresh insert. He wasn't ranked in the top 15 for a long, long time. He hasn't had a fight since February of last year. So he's been out of the ring for 16, 17 months. And he lost by knockout to Charles Martin. But now he's freshly inserted into number 10. PBC fighter match. Right. Are you starting to understand, for those of you who maybe say that uh, I'm just putting things out just to criticise the PBC or, or whatever. No, this is factual, right? This can't just be opinion. It has to be factual. He hasn't had a fight in 16 months. Last time he did fight, he got knocked out by Charles Martin. But yet he's a fresh insert at number 10. Why is that? Because he's a PBC fighter taking on another PBC fighter in Michael Coffey. So they're probably going to put some WBA belt on the line. Would it be a WBA international or whatever the hell you call him? Okay, because there's so many different belts with the WBA. It's unreal. That's why he's there. Um, number 11, FA Jagba. Fresh insert. I don't mind him being in a, in a top 15, not at all. Big knockout power. I know a lot of people will be a little bit critical because he um, he did get dropped to the floor by Igo Kaladze, but he did get up and beat him up. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with getting hit to the canvas or whatever else, okay, because it's heavyweight division. One punch will change anything. It doesn't matter who it is that you're fighting. You can fight a journeyman, a gatekeeper, be beating that fighter up. It all means nothing if you get clipped. He got clipped, he went down. But he did get back up and, of course, won the rest of the fight. But he will... Be taken on number 12, Frank Sanchez, Cuban heavyweight, undefeated 18 0 on the Wilder Fury 3 undercard or Fury Wilder 3, I should call it. So, FA Jagber versus Frank Sanchez, that's now official for that card. So, for me, the winner will justify their position because both of them haven't, neither one of FA Jagber and Frank Sanchez, in my opinion, have earned that kind of lofty position. But with the fact that they are fighting each other, the winner of that fight will justify a top 15 ranking. I think we can agree on that one, yeah? Again, Frank Sanchez, he hasn't really beaten anybody yet. But if he does defeat FA Jagber, which I think would probably be the fight of the night, to be honest with you. That's the fight I'm looking forward to, even more than the headliner, if I'm being brutally honest. But either way, I think that both of these are really stepping up. That's the only way, way we can put it. They're both stepping up. Of course, you've got Frank Sanchez. He's somewhat of a PBC fighter, but he, he does activate his free agent status, which a lot of PBC fighters don't do, where he will go fight on other networks. Of course, being a PBC fighter, you're not contractually obliged to be fighting on a, on a Showtime or a Fox Sport or any kind of PBC show. You can move across to different platforms. All PBC fighters can do that. Most of them don't because they're afraid to do it. Okay, They will hide behind the skirts of the PBC. Frank Sanchez is not one of them. In fact, his last two fights have been on his own. Okay? F.A. Jagba, formerly a PBC fighter, and his last fight or two has been on top rank. So he's actually left the PBC. Is he still managed by Shelly Finkel? I don't know. But I know F.A. Jagba is actually sparring Tyson Fury as Tyson Fury prepares for Deontay Wilder. In fact, F.A. Jagba used to be Deontay Wilder's sparring partner. But of course, with all the excuses and the fact that uh, Wilder is trying to be, um, um, I don't know, it's something to do with his Nigerian heritage or whatever it may be, F.A. Jagba don't like that. For me, I don't agree with F.A. Jagba on that situation. If a Wilder wants to be proud of his heritage, then there's nothing wrong with that, okay? But F.A. Jagba, he didn't like it when Anthony Joshua done it, and he doesn't like it with um, Deontay Wilder doing it either. He wants to be the king of Nigeria, okay, representing Africa, 
okay? But he's going to have to prove a lot of that himself. Anyway, move on. Number 13, Zan Kotzebuski. Is this a guy, somebody mentioned to me a while ago that he's actually um, part of Frank Warren's stable. I've never seen him on a Frank Warren show. Is it him or am I thinking of somebody else? I'm not too sure. But Zan Kotzebuski, 15 and 0 from Kazakhstan. You know, Kazakhstan, they, they do produce some pretty good fighters such as Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. You've got Kana Islam. Okay, Kana Islam, of course, he was born in China, but he is uh, fighting under the uh, Kazakhstani flag. He does have the nationality. So they do have some very, very good fighters. At heavyweight, it's not so much. Not so much. So it's a bit of a rarity to see a Kazakhstani in the heavyweight rankings. But 15 and 0, let's see him fight somebody alive. Let's see it. If he is a Frank Warren fighter, if I have heard that correct, well, let's see him go fight down Dubois next. Let's see how good he is. Okay. Uh, number 14, Mike Wilson. Do me a favor. And we can, although Mike Wilson, I mean, to be fair, okay, he is actually going to be risking it taking on Michael Hunter. So we do have to give him credit, but he should not be ranked in the top 15. He hasn't done anything at heavyweight to deserve it. That's the truth, right? And number 15, 5 0, Lenier Perro. Of course, he's a fresh insert. 5-0 and oh and ranked in the top 15, somebody somewhere is taking the absolute biscuit. Are they not? How can you have five fights against stiffs on some small Argentinian and Cuban shows? Five fights and be ranked in the top 15. This is where money comes into it. This is what it is. Of course, Cuba, they, they now have another heavyweight with uh, Lenny Apero. How good is he? We have no idea. Unless you're really, really hardcore, maybe you'll have something, something to say about him. But for me, I've never seen him before in my life. Never seen him before. Hopefully we do. Hopefully we do see him in some decent fights. So we can start talking about him in a, either a positive way. Yes, he's a very good fighter. Or in a not so positive way. Okay. But of course, he's going to be joining the likes of Frank Sanchez and Luis Ortiz as Cubans represented in the heavyweight division. But my problem is, you've only had five fights. Why on earth is he ranked in the top 15? Why is that? It doesn't make any kind of sense. It really doesn't. Now, the WBA, they keep on proving yet and yet again, either they're incompetent or they're on the twist. Okay, In other words, they're taking some kind of money. They're corrupt. This is not how boxing should be. This is one of the things that is killing boxing. Because they can fool the average fan, and that's probably why they do it, because they'll go, oh, well, um, so-and-so is ranked number whatever, in, in the sanctioning bodies, that must mean he's a really good fighter. He's the number eight in the world, number 10 in the world, 12 in the world, number one in the world. But there's always reasons behind why most people who watch boxing know they shouldn't be in that kind of position. But it's a way of conning the public. The WBA are very, very hand in hand with Al Heyman's PBC. You can see that. You can see that. And I've invited Gilberto Mendoza, the president of the WBA, on the channel on a couple of occasions. I get no response. I've emailed the WBA direct. I get no response whatsoever. I mean, I can get most people on my channel, but for some reason, they don't want to do it. Do you know why? Because they know I'll pull them up on it. I ain't going to put any punches on it. It's disgusting. Because one of the first questions I will ask is, are you corrupt? Are you being paid by the PBC to rank these fighters? Is that why you're doing it? As I said before, a lot of people will concentrate on the promoters and have a go at the promoters. Start with the sanctioning bodies. That's where the problems lay. No sanctioning body is perfect. No ranking system is ever perfect. It's never going to be because, of course, it's always going to be subjective. But this isn't subjective. This is just pure idleness. This is what this is. It's a crap top 15. Crap. As per usual, WBA, you need to pull your socks up or get out of boxing. It's disgusting. In the year 2021, we have to insinuate that a sanctioning body is, as of old, corrupt. Because for me, I think that, that WBA are either corrupt or they're incompetent. You decide which one it's going to be. Anyway, my thoughts, you drop me yours, click thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.